Welcome into NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I am Tom Dan, and what you're about to see are two different snippets from videos posted on our Bengals channel, youtube.com slash Bengals TV, and our Patriots channel, youtube.com slash Patriots Today. Trying to ramp up coverage on both of those. So if you're a fan of the Patriots or a fan of the Bengals, Go subscribe. If you just love the NFL and latest buzz around it, well, stay tuned. We have you covered on the trade rumor side on that front. It's going to be the Patriots portion, then the Bengals portion involving Mac Jones and Austin Eckler. Welcome into Patriots today. I am Tom Downey. There is some sudden Mac Jones trade rumors out there. Mike Florio. I know it's Florio, reports that Bill Belichick has been shopping Mac Jones, a.k.a. McCorkle, to other teams this offseason. Now, I know it's Florio. I know that's some dicey background. I mean, we were at the Combine this year, and I will say there was some Mac Jones trade whispers while we were there. The way it was described to me was, it's probably not going to happen, but, eh, you know, make note of it. So... Florio maybe heard something similar. Maybe it's to a different level than what we had heard, but there has been at least a little bit of buzz around Mac Jones uh, in the past. There were four destinations mentioned by Mike Florio. We'll spend some time on these. The Raiders, Bucks, Texans, and the Commanders. Now, the Raiders had also been mentioned uh, at the Combine. That was before they landed Jimmy Garoppolo, so keep that in mind. Tampa does love former Patriot quarterbacks. Well, I guess it's really just uh, Tom Brady. But hey, still, they have Baker Mayfield, Kyle Trask. Not a great room. Houston uh, would be interesting. There are some former Patriots in the front office up there. Uh, they had the number two overall pick, so I would assume they just take a quarterback at number two. But hey, they could do a weird thing if they want. The Commanders seem committed to Sam Howell, but this could be a list of teams that Bill Belichick reached out to potentially about a potential Mac Jones trade. The other report from Florio is that there are issues that exist between Mac Jones and, bet er, and between Bill Belichick, that there's tension, real tension, from the disaster that was the 2022 offense. Mac Jones allegedly reached out to members of the, of the Bama staff of like, how do I make this work? And that upset Bill Belichick, which, although I am not a true diehard believer in Mac Jones, this was not his fault last year. This is Bill Belichick going, I can make Matt Patricia my offensive coordinator, and that will work. When everyone was like, that's a bad idea, this isn't going to work. Guess what happened? It didn't work. The quarterback regressed significantly because Matt Patricia was the offensive play caller. It, 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 it went the way we thought it was going to go. His numbers dropped. Missed some time, too, but his numbers dropped substantially. Everything went the wrong way. Mac Jones showed some promise in year one. Didn't show very much in year two. That's because the play caller was a disaster. The offense was a mess. So I'm not mad at Mac Jones for trying to find some, some help. Like He needed it because he wasn't getting it from his offensive coaching staff. Maybe Bill O'Brien will be the guy to fix it there. So, some more on this coming. But first, will the Patriots end up trading Mac Jones? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video. Now, let's say they do trade him. I think the answer is no. I think Mac Jones stays for at least one more year. If the, the if he gets moved, the internal guy is Mac Jones lookalike, Bailey Zappi. It's the buzz cut, the short hair, too. He was decent in a small role. I think the situations, for whatever reason, the opposing defenses were much easier, better there. But Zappi is a short area, accurate quarterback. The arm strength's not great. He's a backup. He's a Case Keenum type. I don't think he's an actual franchise starter. When this report came out, the immediate thought was, Lamar Jackson? And I get it, right? If you're going to move on from Mac Jones, get a better player. Get a better quarterback. Get a franchise guy in Lamar Jackson. And... It would require some creativity. Maybe that makes it a little bit less likely. But if the Patriots are going to dump Mac Jones, I think you would want to have an upgrade. That becomes much more palatable of, we went on from our first pick after two years because we got Lamar Jackson. Then we dumped Mac Jones, went with Bailey Zappi or Will Levis or Hendon Hooker or something weird. So 
if you can get Lamar, which is a big if because the contract thing is weird, all the stuff we've spent months talking about for Lamar Jackson, it's a weird situation. But if you can get Lamar in New, in New England... That team is once again back in the midst of the playoff picture, truly in the division crown race as well. So if you can get Lamar, you move on from Mac. Otherwise, I'd probably give Mac Jones a shot with a real offensive coordinator in Bill O'Brien. The latest Bengals trade rumors come to us from Bleacher Report. They pitched the idea of a trade for Chargers running back Austin Eckler, which, hey, it'd be a fun piece to add to an already pretty damn dynamic offense. It would cause some complications money-wise, which you do with Joe Mixon. We'll break all of that down. First, the pitch from Bleacher Report. Eckler is an elite dual threat who would be perfect in the Bengals' backfield next to quarterback Joe Burrow. Since he's entering the final year of his contract, a third or a fourth round pick might be enough to entice the Chargers to trade him. Uh, we're going to come back to the money side of it because that, that's a big factor in this. But the trade would be Eckler to the Bengals, a third or a fourth. Um, given what running backs tend to go for these days, I am inclined to suspect this would be more along the lines of a fourth-round pick. Running back trades don't happen very much. The value's very low, and they just don't carry the value they once did outside of Christian McCaffrey, who I love. I love Eckler, too. I don't think he's a Christian McCaffrey type of player. So would you do that trade for Eckler? Let's say it's the fourth. We'll go, we'll go Bengals friendlier. Would you trade for a fourth-round pick for Austin Eckler? Why for yes and for no in the comments section. This is not about the player. This is about the money. That's why Eckler is having issues in, in, in L.A. and why no one, despite a player who has consistently put up awesome numbers, has had little to no trade market at this stage. Eckler had 900-plus yards each of the past two years in the, in the rushing game. That alone is pretty darn good. Then you tack on the receiving numbers, and we're talking 700 yards, 600-plus yards. This guy's a 15,000-yard or 1,500-yard player, a bunch of touchdowns, who hasn't really shown that much sign of decline, relatively speaking, at running back. He's only 27 years old. He does turn 28 in May, but that's... You know, that's Dalvin Cook's age. That's Mixon's age-ish. He's now looking for his third contract. He's probably a bit underpaid, and that's why he wants a new deal. Chargers weren't going to give it to him. No one has so far. Now, you can move on from Joe Mixon. You could save $10 million by making Mixon a post-June 1st cut, which I assume the Bengals would do in the event they're trying to bring on Austin Eckler hypothetical. The problem that I run into here is the money. Let's go to the 10 highest paid backs right now in the NFL. And I'll include Ezekiel Elliott, who was recently cut, for the purpose of this conversation. Of these backs, who's panned out? That this second deal, who has worked out great? Christian McCaffrey got traded. He's been banged up too. Alvin Kamara's missed time, going to be suspended. Ezekiel Elliott got cut. Dalvin Cook isn't the same guy he once was. Derrick Henry's still playing at a high level. He's been linked in trade rumors. Nick Chubb has worked out. Aaron Jones has worked out for the most part. Those two guys are in committees. They split the workload. Joe Mixon. We're talking about cutting him right now. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs are franchise tag guys. Do you want to pay $10 million on a third contract for Austin Eckler? That scares teams. Because it's not fair, but the running back shelf life is minuscule. And when you start to lose the, the, that, that extra half-second step, the numbers dip and they drop hard. Look at Ezekiel Elliott. He was best back in 2016 in the NFL. He can't find a job right now. So you can bring in Eckler if you want. I think it's kind of, I think he's a slight upgrade over Joe Mixon. Is the draft pick worth it? I'm not so sure. And you're still looking for another complimentary back in the draft, most likely. So I'm not necessarily opposed to getting Austin Eckler. I think it gives you a, a fun third down piece that, in terms of like pass catching, is awesome for Burrow. But you're also on an offense where you have, you know, potentially a draft pick at tight end. T. Higgins, who you want to pay, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd. Do you need the pass catching back, or do you want the pass protector back? Those potential issues are, I think, why the Bengals have, at least so far, realistically, not shown much interest in an Austin Eckler trade, and why other teams haven't shown interest in an Austin Eckler trade either.